Welcome to Unbox Analysis. My name is Gary and I'm going to be one of your hosts on this channel. What we're bringing to you today is the Mountain Everest Modular Keyboard. I'm a very big fan of ingenuity and customizing, basically just making things your own. So when I saw this online it really stuck out to me and I decided I had to have it and show it to you guys. Starting out, this box is an extremely well designed and well thought out package. It's very nice, it's clean, and it has very nice magnets. So we're going to dive right into it. First things first, you have the main housing. Mountain Everest calls this the core. Now the core is different than pretty much any other one out there because it has many USB Type-C ports all the way around the side for connectivity and however you want to set it up. We'll get to that in a bit. First up in the box, we have the wrist rest. It's nice. It feels like it's a very high quality material. Clips in, you can use it with or without, no problem. All right, and then next up, we'll get to the accessory department. Very nice, very nice. All right, so it's lined up into four different sections here. Very clean, very concise. We'll start with box number one. Box number one carries with it the keycap puller. The switch puller, that's right, it is hot swappable. You have many different options here for the feet underneath. You know, there's a couple of harder or softer options depending on reverb and how you like the sound to come through. Plus, they show off five of their switches. These are the five they offer on the website. You can pick any one of these five, but they are, they are hot swappable. So you can go with any different option that'll fit. You have the Cherry MX Blue, the Cherry MX Red, the Speed Gray, the classic Cherry MX Brown and the Speed Red. All right, we'll move on to the next section here. Coming up next, honestly, this is the first part that caught my eye. This is called the Media Dock. Now, the Media Dock, it's it's interesting to say the least. We'll get it out and get to it here in a bit, but it's a volume knob and it has uh, multiple media control buttons. All right, coming up next, we have the numpad. Now, the numpad has four different programmable buttons on top. They're LCD screens, you can make them hotkey, hot switches, whatever you're feeling, anything's fine. Same switches, all right, they sound fantastic. We'll get more to that here in a little bit. Then last but not least, they have a pretty, pretty nice braided USB Type-C cable for the main connection. All right, inside you also have a manual Manual just has a basic quick start guide, a couple of nice Mountain Everest stickers. Again, this is their um, this is their main emblem. This is what they have on the keyboard, the numpad, the box. But it's it's very subtle. It's not overtaking. It's not going to be the star of your whole show, which is very nice. I like that a lot. And inside, you just have some basic information about the hot keys, hot swappable keys. Pretty good information. Well put. We're on. Okay, so here we have the keyboard fully assembled. This cable does not come with it. We'll put the link in the description. I just think it makes it look pretty nice. All right, so up top, we have the LCD screen with the volume knob and the media controls. Now you'll see if we turn it, we have different options for brightness, volume, lighting. There's different profiles. You can set even a clock. You can also put a custom image here to be displayed. But the lighting, you can actually change the lighting for the keyboard, all sorts of things. Over here on the numpad, we have the four programmable keys. Right now they're just set to the stock. We did not program anything in there. Um, the contrast is nice. Uh, I do notice that the color profiles are very nice and clean and you can see them great from just about any angle. Also, if you want, you can take this out just like this and swap it to the other side while it's running. Fully hot swappable with that along with the keys. Now you notice inside here we have the Cherry MX Blue. Quite clicky if I do say so myself. That just slides right back on. All right. So overall, the profile of the keyboard is very nice. It has a very, very nice tactile sound. I went with these switches because I prefer kind of more of a tactile feedback. All right. Okay, so to wrap up our review here, um, as a gamer, PC builder, one thing I really like, I like things to be clean, look nice. So 
huge aspect of this that I really like is their cable management. Tracks built in the back of each module, then across the back of the core. Plenty of different options, different directions, however you want your setup, however you want to do it. All right, also, the feet, the extra feet. They are magnetic, pretty strong magnets. Lots of different options there. Okay, now let's go over the, uh, the software for the Everest Max. The software is called Basecamp. Um, just came off another update today. From what I can tell, it seems about the same, but looks like they're keeping up on it, so that's good. Okay, so let's start here. So you can see I've got the keyboard set up down here. This is the way I prefer to have it. Um, so let's start here. So first, we have different profiles. You can set up different profiles based on, you know, work, game, if other people use your computer. Plenty of different options. Save as many as you want there. Next, we'll go to the one that people will probably use most, the lighting control. So I'll go ahead and go through these real quick. So first, you have the color wave. Now, color wave, you can change. So right now, you can see I have it rotating upwards. As you can see on the camera, it appears to rotate upwards. All right, down, boom, coming down. You know, you get the idea, left, right. Very responsive, all live updating. Okay, so something else we can do, we can increase the speed. We can decrease the speed. Again, I know a lot of keyboards, they have these options here. I'm just trying to, just want to give you a good good overview of what we have. Now you can also change this to different colors, single color, color wave, dual color, etc. All right, so next you have tornado. You can change the rotation direction, speed, same kind of stuff. Breathing. Reactive. You can see as I hit the keys, they will change red. I believe these are north facing LED switches, so a little easier to see from this camera angle. You have matrix, just kind of all over, pretty neat. You can do custom setups. I have not messed with this too much. Um, there seem to be quite a bit of different things you can do with it. Or, you know, sometimes you just want it a little quieter, so lights off. All right, so I'm going to leave it back on color wave for this. All right, so next we're going to go to key bindings. You can bind pretty much any different key to do whatever you would like. Now, up here, you have the four programmable LCD LED screen buttons. Um, I have one set for Discord. I put this custom image here. So if you click on it down here, you can edit the image, choose whatever image you'd like, really anything. Um, and you can see here, link to program file. I have Discord EXE. You click browse, you go through, find the EXE file, and off you go. So next, I have one that just opens up a file folder. Pretty basic. I did add one for Chrome, and then there's one here that um, opens up task manager. Okay, so that's kind of the general idea there. All right, then macros, you can set up macros. I'm not gonna go too into detail on that right now. Next, we have the wheel. Okay, so you can see here, I have my wheel set to volume. So if I turn it, you can see it changes my volume. Now this is my home screen for this. This always stays on volume. If I wanna see the other menus, double click this button here, and I have all the other menus. You got volume, lighting, basically all the same options you have here, just at your fingertips instead of the app. Now, if you would like this home screen to be something else, you can choose anything you'd like here. You can do a custom image, a couple different types of clocks, brightness control, volume like I have, or you can do like, all right, this one, CPU. So now you can see down here, it's showing my current CPU usage. Um, oh, went to zero for a second, nice. CPU, GPU, hard drive, internet, RAM, just, you know, whatever you feel like keeping track of. Another cool one, APM. Kind of a fun one for gamers overall. But I do like to leave mine on volume, just, you know, that's what I like. All right, so you can also choose to turn off some of these menus here. If you don't want them, you can change the menu color to pretty much anything you'd like. All right, then we have some extra settings. This is where you check for updates. This is the updates for the keyboard, the actual firmware itself. Um, I have had two updates in the last three days. So far, I haven't really noticed any issues. I imagine they're just doing small fixes or updates and whatnot. Um, yep, and you have a couple things up here for a thing called game mode. You can disable certain keys and combinations so you don't accidentally tab yourself out of a game or exit out of the game, you know, basic stuff. <laughs> <laughs>